Hello, YouTube. Welcome out to another fantastic Wednesday night, one of the greatest nights of the week. And so if you're just tuning into us, you are going to have your minds blown tonight. We're visiting you here on the Wise Guys and Ties CJ Wallace channels, and we are bringing you jam-packed content on how to grow your business credit. If you had trouble with um, receiving personal credit lines, have you had trouble with overdrafts, have you had are your financial systems in a mess, in a wreck, then this is what you want to, you can't miss this folks. And so to get us kicked off tonight, who's going to really take you down this journey, man, this is the guy we call the money guy. And why would we call him the money guy? Well, this is a guy who is now managing over $1.25 million of retirement funds that he uses in both business and real estate. Now, is that somebody you can learn something from? Of course it is. He has helped over just in the last uh, year or so, about 90 other businesses gain access to t uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars of capital to use for expansion, growth, and doing what they were put here on this earth to do. So I'm not going to take any more of his time, but go ahead and give your hand, put your hands together for Mr. Joseph Smith. Come on, everybody. Woohoo! Yes, sir. Come on, buddy. All right. All right. Hello, you too. So excited. Oh, man, I've been working with so many of you folks. You've been calling in. We've been helping so many people get started with Velocity Banking, with Business Credit with Velocity Banking and Business Credit, mm -hmm. it's exciting what, we're been, what we've been able to do. Now, one of the things that I've noticed is that we have a lot of people that are actually um, a little bit confused as to what business credit is, because we really haven't gone over on a YouTube video in a while now, business credit. We've talked a lot about Velocity Banking over the last couple of months. So, we're going to go ahead and jump right in and re-explain what business credit is because it's a huge part of what Wise Guys and Ties does. So, for all you folks, especially the new folks, because we have new folks jump, jumping on these YouTube channels every day, um, everything that I'm going to cover today and everything that Ray's going to cover today is uh, in a little four-step book, uh, ebook that you can download. We put all the notes together for you, so you can just sit back, relax and uh, just listen and absorb it in. Then download the book and go over the notes again. To get the book, text CREDIT to 602-497-2257. That's the word CREDIT to 602-497-2257. And when you do, not only will you get a download for this awesome ebook that gives you the four steps to building business credit, but it's also going to put you into my weekly email list. So you're going to get some great information about business credit and the news. Sometimes we'll like tell you about some of the success our clients are having, or we'll just talk about current events and what's being reported uh, on business finance, business credit especially. So, guys, if you're serious about business credit, if you're serious about velocity banking, these two are critical steps to helping you fund and grow your business, even as a startup. So let's jump in. Why are you gonna to listen to me? Well, because I'm a football player, right? And if you don't, ooh, I could crush you. Not that I'm going to, but I just want you to know who I am. So why, this big guy, why are you listening to this big guy? Well, my background is I played football uh, in high school. That's uh, me right there, number 57. Um, I had a great time. Uh, I was very blessed to be recruited to play college football. Yes, don't adjust your sets. That's a blue turf. I played for the Boise State Broncos. Bronco fans, woo! Go orange, go big blue, right? I had a lot of great times. I learned so much during this time. Uh, this is my team in my senior year. We had, uh, we learned things like, you know, preparation, teamwork, uh, uh, having a hard work ethic, how to hustle, preparation, practice, practice, practice. There's so many great uh, things that you learn in sports, doesn't matter what level you're at, that translates into the business world. Would you agree with that? That that hard work ethic and teamwork and learning how to, uh, to hustle, all that translates into a good business? 
Well, I do. I think so. Now, again, here I am. This is, this was a great time uh, for me, uh, being a part of something great like a football team and learning so much. I was very blessed. Uh, I also, family came to visit. That's mom. Hi, mom, I'm saying right there. Right, I had such a, such a great time. Uh, she came out to a lot of the games. And then over here, another picture of when Boise State, because when I played for them, keep in mind, they weren't as successful uh, back then as they are today. When I played for them, they were still a one double A college, okay? So that means we were the small little team that uh, every other place that was a big college would schedule for their homecoming game, right? We were like, uh, we were the team that got beat up. If, we, if, the, if, if you're thinking of like the Harlem Globetrotters, we were the Washington Generals, right? We were the team that was scheduled for the sure victory. Now, here we are. Where this is uh, the first time Boise State ever beat a Division I ranked opponent. This was the University of Utah, I believe. They were ranked like 20th in the nation. And what was awesome about this is we won in the very closing seconds of the game. And we're there, we're the away team, and we run to our 10 fans that we have in the stands, and we're all singing the fight song, and, and that's me right there. So, you know, I had a great time, learned a lot playing football. But after football, what do you do? What do you do after college? Well. Somebody my size with my uh, unique talents of being able to use my strength and crush people, well, I went into law enforcement, right? Specifically, I was a correctional officer and a detention officer, and uh, that was a really depressing job. I mean, my whole role and function was I was intake, so it was my job when you came to be a resident at our lovely facility to take all your personal stuff away from you. Mm -hmm. It was just a bad time, bad day for everybody. So I left that profession and I started to use my college degree and I got into social work. And I worked for the Department of Economic Security. Specifically, I was a CPS case manager, Child Protective Services. Then my job was to take away children from uh, families or places where they were being abused and put them into safety. So literally whatever job I was at, I, was, I had people, I was catching them on their worst day. It was miserable for everybody, me included. And so these are very negative jobs. I didn't have any economic security working for the Department of Economic Security. I actually, I'll just be straight up, I wanna let you know. I went through two foreclosures which led to a bankruptcy. And um, I, I didn't know what to do. I, I was somebody who did everything right. I thought I was doing everything right. I went to school, got good grades, right? Played college football, went to college, got a degree, right? And then I became a, a contributing member of society, right? I got the house and the car and the wife and the kids, all of it, the American dream. But it all, it all was like a farce because it all came with hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt. Student loans, the home mortgage, the auto loans. I couldn't afford any of it. And the debt was crushing me, which led to the two foreclosures and the bankruptcy. So I, I just didn't know what to do. If I ever wanted to ever live in a house again, right, I had to figure something out. And when you have a situation where a bankruptcy hits you or you've been in foreclosure, there are some jobs that you can that you work at that might not employ you because of you being a talk about business finance. And your instructor today is somebody who's been through two foreclosures and a bankruptcy. How do you like them apples? <laughs> so, folks, it's because I've been through two foreclosures and a bankruptcy that I had to learn how to, how to figure this out. And I want you to know that it didn't come to me overnight. I didn't wake up one day and figure this out. No, I had to get educated. I had to find people who knew how to do this. I actually got into real estate investing and I got educated on how to do that and I started a marketing business and from there, what I realized was that I wanted to do real estate, but guess what? Real estate takes money and I didn't have it and nobody wanted to lend any money to somebody with two foreclosures and a bankruptcy on the record. So I had to learn, I had to get creative, I had to learn about self-directed IRAs, you know, I had to learn about velocity banking, I had to learn about business credit, I had to learn about all these other financial strategies. And when I, when in doing so, 
I was able to start a real estate business. I'm building a real estate empire. I have at this point seven businesses. As Rach told you, I have raised and managed now over $1.25 million in real estate. These are exciting times, but this is a journey that I've been on for the last six years. And what I want to do tonight is help you make the same journey if you want. If you do, stick with us, come along for the ride, and let's show you how we do this. So I'm going to put everything in the context of a parable. You know what a parable is? A parable is a story that has more than one meaning. It has the meaning of the story, but it also has a deeper meaning. For a lot of times, it's a spiritual meaning, a higher meaning, or a, a deeper meaning, a deeper truth. Well, here's what I'm going to do. Remember I was talking to you about how important sports football was in my life. Now it taught me so many lessons that translated to the business world. Well, I'm going to do that tonight for you. I'm going to tell you about the greatest football game that was ever played. Just so happens that it was between Boise State and the Oklahoma Sooners. Now, I'm not biased, right? Well, okay, I am, but... That still doesn't take away from the fact that this was the greatest game ever played. We're talking about the 2007 Fiesta Bowl. Now, this was years after I played them. I'd love to take credit for the success, right? But uh, last time I played for Boise State was like eight years before this. So, so a long time ago. And, and what they built and what they did was amazing. Now, I want to tell you about this story. But remember, this is in the context of a parable. All right, so what do I mean? Boise State, small college in 2007. Nobody had ever heard of this college, and here they are. They're showing up, and they're vying for the national championship, the small little college. Who are they? And then Oklahoma, the Oklahoma Sooners, they're no, um, everybody knows who they are. They're no, uh, they know their way around, let's just say. They've been to the championship many times. And they're the most winningest college football program in North America. So they obviously were the favored to win. This is like a David and Goliath kind of story. But here, here's why it's a parable. Because you, your business, your business is Boise State here. You're a small, maybe just an upstart company, right? And you're trying to win a championship, right? And, and what is Oklahoma? What does Oklahoma represent? Well, Oklahoma is life. It's competition. It's it's what happens. It's the challenges that we face, the obstacles that we have to overcome, and the opportunities that we seize. So here's what happens. You you start a business. Now, if you start a business, if you're if you're on this YouTube channel and you have a business, guess what? You're already in the championship. You're already playing for the championship. That's what business credit is. You have to start a business. If you have, you're already in the championship. You've already made it. For those of you who haven't started a business, look, you've got to get off the couch. You've got to get off the sidelines, right? You've got to get in the game. That's what we want to encourage you to do. Now, when you, when you, start, when you, start, when you start your season as a football team, we didn't say, you know what, it would be great is if maybe we win at least one game or hopefully we go 500 for the year um it would be nice if we won our homecoming game and no no team sets those kind of goals i mean no you when you're a football team you set the goal we're going for the championship baby we're going to win the championship this year we're going to go undefeated right those are the goals that you set now in business who here sets the goal well, I want to start my business and have it make no money, and I want it to cost more and more every year, and I want it to barely make enough and, and sink my money and my own personal credit into my business to ultimately have it flounder and then drag me down with it. Anybody here set that goal up for business? Mm -hmm. No. Uh -huh. But how many times does that happen in real life? That happens to people, right? We don't plan to fail we just failed to plan right so, so here's the deal we want to show you today how to how to win and so it's setting that goal winning the championship what is winning the championship for you is that having a business that makes more money 
or makes the same amount of money that you're making currently at your job? How, how about a business that makes enough money that pulls you out of debt? Imagine being debt free. What about a business that you grow to the point where you have wealth? Wealth meaning abundance, above and beyond your needs. So much wealth that you can pass it on as a legacy to the third and fourth generation. Now, if that is what you're thinking, then you are playing for the championship, okay? So you're playing for the championship, just like Boise State's playing for the championship, but you're the small little team that no one's ever heard of. You're the small little business owner. No one's heard of your business. How are you going to win? Well, you can start a business. And once you start your business, you're in the game. And then what do you do? Well, what kind of business are you in? A referral business? Are you in a retail business over the road? I mean, do you provide goods, products? Do you provide services? Whatever your business is, you're playing. And then you know what's great when you're in business? When you get that first sale, when you've made that first dollar, doesn't that feel good? Mm -hmm. You know, when you close the deal, when you got the commission, and you're like, yes, score, I can do this. It, it gives you a little little sense of confidence. You're mm -hmm. like, I, I, I like it, and I'm hungry for more, right? That's what being in business is like. And so that's what happened to Boise State in this championship game. They scored a touchdown, and then they scored again. They were actually up by two touchdowns, right? They had some initial early success. They had a great idea, a great game plan, and then they executed it, and it was awesome. But then what happened? Life, what isn't that what always happens? The Oklahoma Sooners is what happens. Have you ever been in a situation where you had an opportunity right in front of you and you just fumbled it? You just, you just lost it, you, just, you had a deal and you talked them into and out of the deal all in one conversation. Like, oh, I can't believe that. Or have you ever been in business uh, and, and you're trying to close this deal and then the deal's intercepted by your competition? Why was it intercepted? Because their bank account is bigger, faster, and stronger than yours, right? Does that happen? Do we ever feel like we've been sacked for a loss? Uh, like, and well, guess what? That happens in life, it happens in football. And what happens to Boise State is that they're at the end of the game. Right at the end of the game, it's fourth quarter, fourth down, 18 yards to go. They're at the 50 yard line. And for those of you who don't know anything about football, what I just said might have been sounding like Chinese to you. You're like, what? Okay, very simply in football, you need to go, you got four tries to move the ball 10 yards. Just 10 yards, that's all you have to do, right? And you have to keep doing that all game long. Teams are trying to do that. But in this situation, they're on their fourth try, and it doesn't matter if they go 10 yards because they're at the end of the game. They're down by a touchdown. So they have to cross the whole field just to score. Well, how do you score in one play and cross the whole field? Now, for those of you who are my football fans on the line, right? What do you, what do, you do? What's the play you call when you're on the 50 yard line and it's the last play of the game and you gotta get all the way to the other side, right? What's the play you call, huh? Right, you call the Hail Mary, right? You just, you just take the ball and you chuck it as far as you can and you hope your teammate catches it, right? That's, that's, the, what, it, that's what that means. A Hail Mary is like, oh, please, please, God, please, please. Let, let, uh, let us catch the ball and win. Now, the defense knows that that's what you're going to do. In fact, this defense has a special name. It's called the prevent defense because they put all of their guys way back, right? They've got a shell of guys hanging out there back by the end zone saying, uh-uh, you can't get in here. We know you've got to throw the ball. So the, the quarterback can maybe send out five, six receivers, but they're throwing back like nine, 10 guys, sometimes, yeah, 10 guys, all covering those five that are out there. So it's really hard. In fact, only 1% of the time does the Hail Mary pass ever get caught. Now let's relate that to business. Here you are, it feels like you might be at the end of the game. If you don't make this sale, if you don't close this deal, 
you might lose. You might be out of business for good, right? And, and, and that's not just the business. That might drag you down personally. Who knows how much personal debt you've guaranteed or have tied up in your business. So it's like feeling desperate. What are we going to do? And then so you're like, well, I know. We'll go to the bank. We'll go to the bank. We'll try to get a loan. Maybe they'll give us a credit card. And then you're like filling out the application and you send it in and you're like, oh, please, 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 God, let them approve the application so I can get some funding for my business. Does that happen? You bet that happens. It happens all the time. Now, what do you think the odds are that you're going to get approved? Well, they're very small. Because let me let you in on a little secret in the lending business, all right? Something I've learned over the last few years. If you really need money, nobody wants to give it to you. They're like, uh-uh, I ain't giving you any of my money if you need it that badly. And then, if you're doing okay, your business is legitimate, and you're having some success, everybody wants to jump on the train. They'll say, yeah, I want to help you. Let's get this thing going. Let's, let's build this 10 times bigger than what it is. And they want to give you money. They want to invest in you. So, here you are. At the end of the game, it's feeling a little desperate. Not a lot of people want to lend you. What place should you call? You shouldn't call the Hail Mary, right? You shouldn't go desperately trying to apply for that bank loan. What you need to do is you need to get business credit. That's the play you call. That's the winning solution. Let's see what Boise State does in this situation right here. To move the chain. The Broncos. Bransky's legs might be critical here to save time on throwing the ball. Down the middle. The lateral! To the corner of the end zone! Can you believe that? Woo! In the final seconds of four down and 18, Montgomery. And it is. It's not the size of the dog in the fight. It's the size of the fight in the dog. Wow, I don't know if you guys could all see that or hear that on YouTube, but that was amazing. Oh, that play was called the flea flicker. They caught the ball. It was in prevent. They were in the prevent defense. He caught the ball. The defense was just going to crush him. They were coming down, and he pitched us the ball backwards to a receiver that nobody saw who runs up the sideline for a touchdown and at the end of the game Boise State was down by a touchdown and then they tied the game oh, so exciting best finish ever and it's not even finished you're gonna have to stick with us I'll tell you what happens at the end but you see let's bring this back business credit is that solution when you're in that situation, what can you do? How do we get out of this? How do I get the funding that my business needs so that we can win business credit, right? Which is why we are going to show you right now tonight, the entrepreneur's playbook for building business credit. We're gonna give you this, just like a team needs to have a playbook, a guide, a plan, a game plan that pits our strengths against our opponent's weaknesses. We're gonna show you how to build your business's strengths and use that against, and not against, but help you navigate the business finance world and how to get past the gatekeepers and get to the people that have the money that are willing to lend. Because folks, there is no shortage of money out there. There really isn't. There's a lot of money out there. You just don't know how to get access to it. And when you do find it, it's like you don't know the right play to call to get them to give it to you. We're going to give you that play tonight. We're going to give you the whole playbook. We're going to open it all up for you step by step. All right. So where, let's see, who, are, who am I? I'm Joseph Smith from Tucson, Arizona. I'm a real estate investor. That's my business partner, Ray Fleming. Just to give you a little flavor, we use business credit as part of all of our businesses in real estate. I mean, you can use business credit in a number of ways. But when we buy rental properties, we have five of them. When we, when we buy these rental properties, we put them in their own businesses. Then, then we have that business build business credit. And that business credit is what's used to offset incidental costs that come up with a rental. 
So if any of you know anything about the rental business, a lot of people stay away from it because they're like, I don't want a 3 a.m. in the morning call about a toilet. I don't want to deal with the water heater going out because who is ultimately responsible when something breaks on the house? That's right, the landlord. And, and so if you're collecting rent checks, maybe a thousand or 1500 a month, and you're financing the house, only a portion of that money are you keeping, and then something breaks and it costs eight thousand, fifteen thousand to fix. Where's that money going to come from? Well, it has to come from you, unless you have business credit on the business that owns the property. Then put it on the business credit. So a fifteen thousand dollar expense for a new air conditioner, right? For a HVAC for the whole house, right? Now becomes something that can be, can be a simple couple hundred dollar payment right who, who can pay that well you can have your tenant pay that you can take that money from the cash flow that you're receiving off of the actual rental so just one out of many examples good friend of mine Stephen Weibel out in Florida well go back in time to 2008 he was one of the top realtors in New Jersey right but uh, what happened in 2008 anybody remember oh yeah the whole bottom fell out of the uh, housing market, the bubble burst. And so there went his business. But Stephen got smart. A year before that happened, he started building business credit. He had an excellent business credit rating. When everybody was sinking, he made a deal with a hard money lender. Hard money. I, I, if you don't know what this stuff is, you got to get educated, right? But in, in real estate, you can use hard money where you get lot, lots of money for a very short period of time at a high interest rate. But he used hard money to acquire the properties, and they always require that you have skin in the game. Well, Stephen didn't have any money, but he had proof of funds through his business credit. So the hard money lent the money for the acquisition. Stephen used the money to do the flips. Now, he put together an awesome deal which, you know, I'm not saying you could do this. It, the situation just happened right when everybody was in foreclosure. Stephen put together a huge package deal, like 32 houses, bought them all in one shot, fixed them up. In fact, fixed them up, sold off half of them. He did a short sale, so he was able to negotiate a steep discount and build his own equity. Sells off half of them, pays off the other half of the houses, pays off the hard money lender, and now he owns 16 houses free and clear, and he's able to offer safe, affordable, clean housing to people at a time when they're looking to get out of their houses that they were underwater in and couldn't afford anymore. So now he's able to generate stable income for himself and his family, and then it just grows. And he starts other businesses, and we fast forward to today, guess what? The guy, who guess who's a hard money lender today, right? Steven, a very successful businessman, right? But he used business credit as part of his strategy. I could go over tons of examples, but I just wanted to show you, give you a little flavor of what could be done, at least in the real estate space. Because a lot of you that I work with, that I've been talking to, you have an eye for getting into real estate. So I wanted to show you that you could use it in a buy and hold strategy, or you could use business credit in a fix and flip strategy. Works either way, all right? But what do most people do when they need money? Where do they go? They go to the bank. Now, what happens when you go to the bank? Here we go, we've got 10 business owners, just like you guys on the line. If we lined you all up and you're all gonna apply for a loan, and let's say I'm the bank, you're coming to me, you're filling out your paperwork, and let's say you're applying for 150,000, maybe 250,000, but you're applying for money that you can use immediately for your business. Here's 10 people. How many of these 10 people that apply for a line of credit, a loan, a credit card, how many people are going to get approved? Look at this. Only one out of 10. What? what? Only one out of 10? Are you serious? Why? Well, think about it from the lender's perspective. 90% of all businesses fail in the first five years. That's a statistic that comes from the SBA. I mean, think about that. You're the lender. Imagine you're the lender now, and you know, right, if we go back here, you're looking at these 10 people, and you know that in five years' time, nine of them are going to be out of business. What do you do? 
Just give them each, okay, here's 250,000 for you, here's 250,000 for you. Would you just give out all that money? If you know that they, they're gonna go bankrupt, go out of business and can't pay you back. No, you're a bank, you're a lender, you're in this to make money, right? So since you know that businesses fail, you're gonna tighten your lending restrictions. You're gonna create some extra hoops. In fact, I mean, let's look at why this person, this person didn't have enough cash flow. They just didn't, didn't have enough cash flow. This person had no personal credit or a bad personal credit, right? Here's another person, had no collateral, right? Oh my goodness, no collateral. These people over here, look at them. These, these people right here, they have character issues. Character issues, what do you mean? Ray Flung is gonna go into all this, but these people did not appear to be good characters, something suspicious or fishy about them. And then these two people over here, they don't have the capacity, they haven't been in business long enough. So you end up with only one person who is legitimate, who meets all the standard criteria that can get the financing. How on earth are we going to navigate that field? Because did you even know what all that meant? You know. Cash flow, credit, capacity, character. How do you get past all of that and, and get to be the guy that gets the money? Well, that's what you're here tonight for because this is what we're going to show you. In fact, this is what Ray is going to show you how you get to become that guy, right? That's what we're covering tonight. So let me tell you about Mr. Fleming. I like to call him the property guy. Many people call him the property guy. You know why? Because this guy finds properties, he funds properties. He, anal he does the analysis on properties, and he either, he either flips them for a profit or he cash flows them for a profit. People from all over are calling up Ray all the time, like, hey, I got a deal. Hey, would you come look at my deal, or would you help me run the analysis? Everyone's always wanting him, because he's a former contractor. He's, he's done this. He could actually, if he wanted to, he could build a house all by himself from the ground up. And it'd actually be a really cool house. I've actually seen him work on houses that I was like, ooh, I want to live here. But okay, why do you want to listen to him about business? That's great, he knows all this stuff about real estate, but let me tell you about business. The man has started more businesses than I have fingers and toes, right? That's a lot of businesses, all right? He has been, he's had eBay businesses. You know, I mean, find something at a, <laughs> at a yard sale and then sell it for hundreds of dollars online. I mean, how cool is that? Uh, the guy is, He's been in the kettle corn business. Who doesn't like kettle corn? Right? It's a great business to be in. This guy has had a landscaping business, a handyman business. He's started wholesale businesses. He has fix and flip companies. This guy has uh, rent companies that hold rental properties. The guy has uh, marketing businesses. Uh, he's starting a virtual office business. This guy has uh, gap funding businesses and he's getting into multi family flips this guy knows a lot about business and you got to listen to him because he knows how to build business credit because he's done it in just the last year for over 90 of our clients so make sure that you're taking copious notes when you listen to this guy everybody please welcome to the front of the camera mr. Ray Lemon Sounds really awesome. Thank you, Joseph, for that introduction. And I'll tell you, folks, that sounds all nice and dandy now, but it's weird. Just thinking about if if I go back five years, just five years, and if I were to ask my five five you know five years younger self where I would be in only five years from now. I greatly underestimated the power, literally the power of working with qualified professionals because it has accelerated the growth tremendously. Literally sitting on a bus stop wanting to do real estate. Actually, you know what? I just wanted a car because I was in a bad situation and couldn't pay my mortgage. I was injured and out of work. And then, you know, I'm about to lose my house and then partnered up with the money guy over there. And then these are just some of the deals that we've been part of. 
actually that our companies have done in just the last two years. So this is the most recent one right now being rehabbed currently. Uh, we have about hopefully two weeks left. You know, there's always problems that pop up, but we just roll with the punches and make sure it gets done on time. And so, uh, you know, we build in for those cushions of when things go a little bit over time. But this is the power, folks. This one here, we purchased at auction 35 days from the moment it was purchased, rehabbed, and actually closed with the new buyer. I mean, wouldn't that be good to know who's actually buying your properties before you even buy it? Something we actually can help you with. So regardless, if you're looking for money to do whatever business it is you want to do, or you are interested in real estate, just hang out with us. That's what I did. I hung out with other successful real estate investors, financers, and it basically started to wear off. Now let's talk about how you can get the funds that you need to grow. Let's talk about business credit, but we're going to compare this to a situation that you should already have a little bit of an idea about. That is the SSN. Some of you are saying it, well, yeah, that's social security number. It's your personal identification tax ID. Now, if we take a look at the EIN, that is the employer identification number, which very similar is the tax ID, but for a business. A business, once you've actually created a separate entity, you know, our bodies are entities, we create separate entities for a lot of other reasons, for a lot of reasons as far as, you know, tax reasons. We'll get into all that later. But let's take a look at the perfect score for your personal self. So as soon as we started talking about credit and personal credit, you probably got a three digit number in your mind right now. So is that three digit, is that number 850 because that is on most scoring models the perfect score there's a couple of the different models and variations out there but majority of scoring models are 850 for a perfect score let's take a look at the business side what is a perfect business score all right so if you don't know that's what we're going to cover tonight so make sure you're here to listen Let's go back to the personal side real quick. Who reports? So if you needed to go check your personal credit score, see what's on your profile, see if there's anything bad on there, who would you go to? There's hundreds of bureaus out there, but there's three big ones. If you're thinking to yourself, Asperian, TransUnion, and Equifax, go ahead and give yourself a gold star because you're right on. Now, let's take a look at the business side. Hey, you have a business? Where do I even go to check my business credit score if I even have one? Well, if you're not quite sure, of course, that's another thing you're going to learn tonight. Let's go back to personal. To get an 850, we're going to have to make that score go up. But there's other things that we do that could create our score to go down. What affects our score? What can make it go up? What can make it go down, sideways? <laughs> if you're thinking payment history, that is, yes, the number one destroyer or grower of positive payment history, excellent for your credit score. Negative payment history, so missing payments, being late, absolutely devastating, destroys your credit. Next in line, the second big impactor is the utilization. What is utilization? Well, let's take a look. If we have a credit card and the limit is $1,000, but we are carrying a balance of $1,000 on it, we've completely maxed it out, it means we're at 100% utilization. If we're only carrying $500, so only halfway, 50% utilization. 300 would be about 30%. The key is to stick 30 or lower. That's the goal. That's optimal growth. But of course, who's going to tell you that? Another factor is inquiries. So are you sourcing new credit or applying for credit? Be very careful, folks, when you're at the store and they're like, hey, would you like to save 20% today by applying for a credit card? And even if you don't get approved, oh, watch out for this. Treat your credit score, your inquiries like gold. It is one of the most valuable tools you'll ever have. 
age of accounts. This is another thing. So how many accounts do you actually have open and for how long? Do they want to see a bunch of brand new accounts? Mm -mm. They want to see that you've had some time on the water, that you have some experience and that you haven't overextended yourself in this long period of time that you've had access to these funds. That is why if you have an old credit card, it can actually hurt your score when you close it. Mix of accounts. So they want to see that you have a, you're able to juggle multiple products. So you have a mortgage, a car loan, a home loan. There is a specific calculation for how many credit cards, it's three credit cards, and they want to see that you have a loan, a mortgage, and these, there's a specific, and that's what I'm saying is, we could show you the exact calculation how to optimize your personal credit, not just your business credit, but your personal credit as well. Stick tuned because actually we got a book in the final productions that we're gonna to bring to you guys super, super cheap that you can just have on building your personal finances. It'll be amazing. What affects your business score? So this is what affects our personal score. What affects our business score? Well, is it all of these things? Is it a few of these things? Is there more? Is there things that we didn't even list on here? Stay tuned. Now, let's go to your personal score. Wherever your number is at, how long would it take for you to get to 850? Would it take a week? Would it take 10 days? 10 years? Or if you have a couple dings, or if you're like me and you use it as soon as it gets good enough, it could absolutely be forever forever to get there. However, what about business credit? And why is business credit optimum for every situation? And, and you'd be like, wait, I don't know anything about business credit yet. But yes, I'm going to show you how business credit is superior in every single way. That's what you're going to learn tonight. Now, quick little disclaimer here. I'm not a licensed attorney, accountant, financial advisor, um, any other licensed individual, even if I have a license, I'm not acting in that capacity today. Everything that we're saying here is general in scope. So do your due diligence. Really, we have a financial team, we have financial advisors, we have free, not free, 30 minute consultations. All you have to do is go to Wise Guys in Ties. Wise Guys in I N Ties.com and you can fill out a consultation form, but you only want to do that if you're absolutely serious about getting money for your business. I'm telling you folks, it, I mean, I love to talk about the weather, but it, let's talk about how to actually get you some money. My time is valuable and I hope you, you value your time as well. So I want to talk to you, but just know that when you call, we're going to do some business. We're going to get down to work. And it's going to start here, folks. It's going to start with getting real with who we are and channeling the inner polar bear in you, being fierce. No, no, no. What is this polar bear doing? Yeah, he might be looking for some fish. He could be doing some other things. He could be drinking some water. But I like to think he's looking at himself. He's seeing what he looks like. I guarantee you, I will make a prediction and I would bet on this and I will bet somebody $100 if they want to take this. I bet every single person on this call, on this live YouTube right now, has looked in a mirror today. I will take that bet all day, every day. And why? Because we know what we look like. Before we go out and present ourselves to the world, we want to make sure that we don't have, you know, a cheeseburger's drippings, and we want to make sure our hair looks good, and that we shaved, and we want to make sure that we understand what we're projecting to the world. And many times, you know, we want to project the, the, the image of success. That's really what we're here for, is to, you know, we don't want to project that we're bums, do we? Unless that's your strategy, but it's not the strategy that we're looking for. But I have a question. If you have a business or you're thinking about starting a business, have you planned on how you're going to look in the mirror? Have you planned on how your business is going to be showing up in the world? And are you paying attention to your business where you are examining it and monitoring it as much as you're monitoring yourself? Because I tell you what, 
There's so many businesses out there running around naked, running around with spaghetti on themselves, and just flat out looking ridiculous. And, and it's not that we don't know, or is it? Actually, yeah, that's, that's simply what it is. We simply don't know what a business looks like. We don't know how to put clothes on a business. We don't know how to make that business look like it's a professional, suited up, um, top star class representative of what you're portraying. That's what we got to do. We got to show up like that. And it starts with children. No, it's, this is my beautiful little girl, but what's more important is this pillow. And lenders is what we're talking about here. She's the lender. You need to give that little lender something that makes them feel comfortable. Because you may think lenders are this big, hairy giant, but they're not. They're actually very, very scared little creatures because they only work with a small fraction of people and they are very very afraid of losing money because i'll tell you why most people most businesses that are applying for funding are deceitful in one way shape or another they are trying to take advantage of it whether they know they are doing that or not and you're like well what do you mean ray how could somebody not know that they're trying to take advantage of a lender if you do not know how to show up to a lender, then you are going into it blind. And would you agree with me that if you're showing up blind and not know what the right way to do it is, that you are actually going to do more damage than good? And I'm sorry, I sometimes have to just put it blunt out there that when we show up and we don't know what we're doing, we can cause damage. Is investing in real estate risky? Yes. Yes, it is. If, can you go out there and lose hundreds of thousands of dollars if you don't know what you're doing? Same thing. You could go out there and if you don't know what you're doing with your business, you are passing up hundreds of thousands of dollars. And that's what we want to prevent you from doing is we want you to show up and know how you're showing up. So when you go to this lender, you want to provide something like this. This is a pillow. This is a pillow that goes everywhere with this and it's what makes her feel comfortable. So be the pillow that they're looking for as they get older and as lenders grow wiser, they still know what's the right thing. They, you can't take it away. They know what makes them feel right. And hey, this pillow has always been good. It's been true. So I don't want you to try to replicate something that is just slightly resembling it. I want authentic, true companies to lend to. That is what we're looking for here, folks. So are you treating your business like a hobby? because these are the hobbies that I took place in when I was little. So when I was younger, I did little chores around the neighborhood to scrounge up some cash to fuel my hobby. Lenders know this. We do not change as we become entrepreneurs. When you're first into the entrepreneur game and you are out there creating your own business and you're creating your own success and you're tired of working for somebody else and building their dream and you're going to start building your own dream. Well, when nobody told you that you actually had to show up for work, sometimes we end up treating our business like a hobby. We're just barely making enough to skate by or to pay for whatever product or service that we are even doing. We're barely paying to keep the lights on and most of the time we're not closing enough deals to even do that. So how do we not treat our business like a hobby? Because every lender out there is going to assume, because the mass majority of people that start home-based businesses or start their own little thing or their own little adventure, they don't know the, the, the discipline that it takes to just keep punching hard every single day. But that's okay. We're here to help you succeed. That is why working with us, CJ Wallace, Wise Guys and Ties, we have developed a system of accountability. This is not just helping you build business credit. We are going to hold you accountable. Somebody that can hold your hand and make sure that you are going to be crossing the finish line of success. So let's talk about that. When we started our business, what was one of the first things you thought about? Just like if, you've had, if you have children, you thought about what you're gonna call those children. You're thinking about what you're gonna call your business. Huh, I'm into a, I'm a trucking business. So 
I'm thinking about, you know, like uh, highway movers, you know, I'm thinking all these names are sound really cool. But then the thing is, do you know what a bad business name is? This is deep, okay? We see business names all the time, but when was the last time you had a discussion with someone about what a bad business name is? I'm sure you can easily notice a bad human name because we deal with people every single day. Ben, wholesome American name, short for Benjamin or Benjamin, one of these things. Is Ben a bad name? No, 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 no. Doesn't seem like it's bad. But if we put it into a different context and we pair it up with a different last name, as for example, Ben Dover, hey, 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 Dover's not a bad name, but when we put those two together, it creates confusion. And actually, it creates a poor child that has to go to therapy. I mean, what were his parents thinking? Come on, folks, get it together. But look, he's a real estate agent. He's, you know, he's out there, he's trying to make his own way. Probably because he kept getting picked on by everybody else. He's like, Psh, I'm done at this employment job thing. I gotta go out there and be my own boss. So let's talk about a little bit of business names, especially if we're doing some real estate investments. We're flipping houses, we're buying rentals. What about the word real estate? It's everywhere. So how could that be a bad name? Hmm. Well, it creates confusion, folks. Confusion. Real estate's a high risk industry. Very risky. You know, I always wondered about that too. How real estate is really risky, isn't it? It's interesting though how uh, how the bank is willing to invest with you on real estate. Is it really that risky? I think the risk is more in the investor, not the investment. Especially real estate, if it's done right, one of the safest investments and something that you can actually mitigate risk the most versus say the stock market or mutual funds or 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 index funds or something like that yeah try going to a bank and asking for some money to go invest into amazon one of the biggest companies there is what are they going to say hey hey mr banker i'd like to borrow a hundred thousand dollars to go invest into amazon it seems like a sure thing no bank is going to do that but all day long they will go into real estate with you Think about that. Investments, another thing that creates confusion. If my business name has investments in it, am I trading stocks? Am I securities? Am I some type of financial institution? It creates confusion. And remember, we're trying to get funds from a scared little lender who is afraid of everything. And anything that spooks them to the slightest degree they run. And so this can possibly spook them. Not saying that you have to go change your business name tomorrow, but the thing is, if you have a situation like this, then that's why you have to work with us because what we do is we take bad situation and we overcompensate in other areas to make it not so bad anymore. It's not that it needs to be completely changed. You just need to build it up elsewhere. So, all right. So today, it's all about credibility, lendability, and making sure your company is ready for everything that is coming this way. So we talked about your name. That's important. But next, where are you even gonna put your business? Where? And some of you would be like, well, you know, I read online that, you know, I'll just put it in my house. All right, well, home is a place that many people start. We don't have money for an office. Sounds reasonable. We already have a house we're paying for. Let's home-based business. Perfect. The only issue is there's a cap to how much you're gonna get. Because let's be honest with what the situation is. Most home-based businesses are treated like hobbies and don't become profitable. Yes, people make millions of dollars from their home office, but it's not the norm. So that is not the ideal situation, but we can work with it. Next. The ideal is an office spot. 
You may not have the funds to actually fully blow, open up an office, but it's part of the progression. Some of you might think P.O. Box, or, you know, P.O. Box is just a straight no-no. But then I get people saying, well, Ray, I was on this site, and there's these guys with huge pockets, and they were talking about go to mailbox, etc. Go to the UPS store. And that is me. I, I listened to that advice and I went to the UPS store and I got a street address with a suite number that looked like a suite. It was, I think the suite address was 115-117. Mm -hmm. just, just a very big building, you know, a huge building. Would you know that the banks and the lenders had Google and knew that it was a UPS store, go figure. And so the thing is, if I'm wanting to borrow money from you, yet I won't tell you where I'm located, are you going to feel comfortable? Or does that give you a little bit of a red flag and a scare? So we're talking about folks. Virtual office, cost-effective solution. It's a hybrid between the home and the home office and the real office. So getting a virtual office, but making sure that you have a private mailbox number, absolutely important because if you're in a regular virtual office, you get thrown into the bag. Now, this is a place that can receive your mail. Many times they, uh, they can forward the mail to wherever you are actually located, but it's an official business location. This is a beautiful way to do it. And stick tuned because we're in the process of setting up a virtual office so if you want to have an office here in Arizona, we will be the most cost-effective, well-run establishment that there is. And I guarantee you that there's nobody will beat our services. And that is something that is coming soon to you. And it's not fully up and running yet because there's a whole lot of licensing and things that got to take place first. But stick tuned that if you need a virtual spot, we're going to have it. And we're going to have it cheaper, not cheaper, more cost-effective than anybody else. So that is a great solution when you're in between the two places, or you do what I did. Actually, don't do what I did. Say as I do, not as I did, because that's why we're here. I am, you're learning from my failures and my mistakes. My mom's house. Hey, I had a little, little handyman contractor business. I don't want people coming by stealing my tools, stealing my trailer, all this stuff, because I'm too cheap to pay for insurance. And so I send the Corporation Commission, the Secretary of State, the address of my mother's house, not too far away, but I can collect my mail there. Sounds like a good idea. So I show up one day, got my truck and my trailer, going over to check on mom. <gasps> Whoa, there's a guy. There's a guy on the side of my mom's house. I'm like, what is this guy doing on the side of my mom's house? And so I run over there, you know, and I grab a shovel, and I'm like, what you doing, Bo? Like, what's going on, man? Who are you and what on earth are you doing on my mom's house? He said he was there working. I'm like, okay. He had a shovel too, so it's like a, it's like battle of the shovels. But he's there doing weeds and things like that. I'm like, what's going on here? That's what I do. And so I go in and I ask my mom. I was like, well, hey, there's a guy here, and I think he got your yard mixed up with the neighbor's yard because he said that he's here to work. She said, well, Ray. See, back then it was kind of one of those things that, you know, have you ever heard of a mechanic not taking care of his own car? Yeah, I did not take care of my mom's yard, and that's what I did, is I took care of yards, but I did not take care of her yard, apparently, fast enough. So, some guy showed up looking for me, wanting to get some work. So my mom, she had some cash, she put him to work. Easy enough. She ended up building a whole crew, put me out of business. So, but see, the thing is, <laughs> The thing is, after we start at our house, we, we tend to move and progress. The goal is to progress, you know, to go here, then here, and then eventually have an office. That's the goal, folks. But another problem <coughs> is we don't keep updating everything along the way. So maybe we start at the house, but then we move to a virtual office. So all of a sudden, my bank says one thing, Secretary of State says another thing, the IRS says another thing, and it's that is the number one reason for confusion. And confused lenders 
do not lend. Have you ever heard that? You know, confused buyers don't buy? Confused lenders will not lend to you. So what we need to do is solve all the confusion. If you're in different locations on different forms and different agencies, solve that problem. Get on the same page. Let's take a little look here. This is a quiz, your first quiz of the night. Okay, I'm gonna show this to you and I will need you to think about what the answer to this, to this problem is. Give you a second to read it. So comment in, jump up, press the ding button. That won't actually notify us, but you will get notified every time we do something crazy like this. So make sure you do it. If you're still thinking about this, or if you're looking at the number, see the way that your mind thinks will kind of help you understand what you're looking at here. I first went to colors, then I went to numbers, looking at patterns in some way, shape, or form, because that's the way my mind thinks. Other people that read this, see, I was never really the best reader, so I skipped right over spot. See, spot is on there twice. That is the mistake that you can, can you spot, spot a mistake here? Many of you have missed that second spot because our mind makes these shortcuts and we graze over information. So this is very important because as you're reviewing your documents, and yes, you need to go back and review all of your business documents, even if you did it right, there is errors that take place all the time and you don't know why because you can read it and your mind will still skip over it. Your name could be spelled wrong and you don't know it because you're just like, yeah, my name, uh, it looked good, it's there. I had my name spelled wrong for two years on the Corporation Commission and I could never find it by my name and I did not know why, but there was an extra letter in my name. We have done this several times. One of the last businesses we set up, we both signed off on the wrong address and it was, it was a uh, street versus road. It's one of those things. So are you that tuned in to catch in an address in a in a hundred page document? Are you that focused to say street versus road? Because I'll tell you what, that little mistake will be caught not by a person, but by the by the computer. Because everything under $150,000 is instantly approved through an algorithm of the computer. Computers don't miss. Well, I guess they could, but I'll tell you what, they're sure, they, they're a lot more accurate on catching these little mistakes. You know, zeros and ones, they're a lot more accurate on catching these things than we are. And those are the actual gatekeepers. The underwriting guidelines, is all directly tied to the computer algorithm and you have to have all these systems in place. These addresses and things, these are automatically pulled by the computer system. And if that's who's checking to see if these things line up, gotta make sure everything's matching folks. And you gotta review these documents. And if you don't know what one of these are, these are called payphones. You may or may not have ever seen one. You can probably find one in a museum somewhere, but Everybody, before we were literally attached to phones 24 seven, we used phone banks. More specifically, everybody got delivery of the phone book. That, that way we knew who to actually call and how to call them. More specifically, when you had a business, you had an opportunity to get into the book. You had an opportunity for advertisements. You had an opportunity to put three A's before your business name so you showed up at the top of the list. Did you know that that's still important? More specifically, the National 411 Registry. You need to be in this. And it's not just calling Verizon 411 because that's Verizon's directory. You actually have to find a mythological creature who has a home phone still. And of course, there's, I usually, you know, I have a little, uh, I have a little group of uh, retired folks who still have home phones. And you know, we make some business propositions to check the 411. Very simple. You gotta go check the 411. And if you don't know how to actually do that, there's a number you can dial. 
it, and we can share that with you. All you have to do is go to wiseguysandties.com and fill out a free consultation. We'll, we'll help you get there. We'll see. You've been in business? Let's figure it out. Those are the things we're going to be working with you on. And if you're not in there, let's get you listed. We literally can just whoo, push you out there to the system. Not a big thing. Now, of course, you don't have to work with us. There's other companies out there. I mean, there's companies out there that will you'll have to pay them $360 just to expedite your listing. It's something that when you're working with us, we just do for you. Is that is that fair? If you're working with us, we just do it for you. Is that fair? I mean, does that sound reasonable? I think it is. Now, another thing you might say is, well, Ray, what number, what phone number am I using in that phone book, in that listing, in that directory? Well, I'll tell you what, it better not be a cell phone number that's in your personal name, and it better not be a Google Voice number. It better not be any of these free numbers. It needs to be a legitimate registered number for your business. If somebody has caller ID, your company needs to be shown up on that registration. If it is not your company, this is who you look like. We like Google Voice. Why? Because it's free. Why do lenders not like Google Voice? Because it's free. What you're gonna find is lenders dislike everything that is easy and free to achieve. Because everybody out there trying to take advantage of them, do you think they're paying for services to take advantage of other people? No, they're using the free resources. They're using Google. Google has a lot of free resources out there. Number one system to create fraudulent applications is Google. Google provides so much free stuff that people just use it to try to scam other people. And I've talked down on Google because Google's listening to me right now and I don't know, they, like, it's weird. It's like the matrix. Google controls a lot of stuff. Tinfoil hat. Yes, tinfoil hats. <laughs> Google can't see through my, you know what? And actually Google will probably start an ad campaign now, now that we say this. Like they will start like a, uh, like a, like a Reynolds like foil wrap ad campaign because we're talking about how we need to protect our heads from them. Email. So rabbit hole, we're back out. Email, email address. Let's talk about your email address. We talked about phone numbers. We talked about getting the listing. We talked about reviewing your documents. What email address? Now I already mentioned Google or Yahoo, Hotmail, any of those free services, big problem. Let's take a look at this. Imagine you're working with Joseph. He's at Bank of America and he's at, and he last minute gave you some new wiring instructions. Came from this email. All of you should have ding, 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 red flag, red flag, but why? Because of the Gmail. And you're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Bank of America, they want to use Gmail. Oh, don't be silly, Ray. Then why are you still using Gmail on your business? If other businesses who are successful and, and put out that professionalism are not using Gmail, then why? Are we still using Gmail in our businesses? We have to get serious about this, folks, especially if you're dealing with, you know, you're asking for the order, you're, you're, you're projecting that you have a successful business that is out there to the world, yet you can't even afford a $5 a month email. Let's look at this. Joseph Smith at bankofamerica.com. You're still gonna be verifying, but that is feeling a lot more secure and comforty. It's professional, folks. You're gonna notice this now when you get business cards and they've spent money on a good business card to promote their free email account. I'm just saying, it's once it, once it gets in your mind, you can't get it out. I notice all the time. Woo. Another issue, licensing. If you require some type of license to do business where you are. We talked about that when we're opening up this virtual office that all of you are gonna to need to take part in. Um, real estate licenses, uh, massage therapists, contractors, accountants. There's so many professions that require licensing, yet one problem is we don't update that address. We don't have our office as the address. We aren't 
making sure our licenses are current if it's something that we need. They, all of these reasons are reasons for denial. And guess what? The lender's never gonna tell you. There is no requirements for them to tell you why they have denied you. Absolutely none. Now on your personal side, if you're denied credit, there's a, there's a regulation in there that says, hey, you get a free report because this will show you why we did not like you or why we did not lend to you. Good luck on the business side because they don't ever even have to tell you why. And if they do tell you, they could just say lack of time in business, not enough information, and it could be your business name. Think about this. This is why it is important to work with the professionals. You can go do it on your own, but is that, is that a risk that you're willing to take? I've been there, folks. I've been there when I can't pay my bills. I've been there when it's putting stress on the family, when I have to look at my children and think, hey, am I even, am I, what am I even doing here? Am I, am I just goofing off? Demand that you work with professionals. And if you're serious about your business, you're gonna demand, hey, I need an accountant. I don't know how I'm gonna pay for it, but I need it. I need a bookkeeper. I need this, I need that. I need a professional to help me get money for my business. That's what we're here for, folks. Where are you gonna put your money once you get it? You're making some sales. We're putting it under the mattress. Uh, uh, uh. Find a bank. There's lots of banks across this country that have such small fees or even free business checking accounts. Get a business bank account. Very important though. Treat that business bank account like it is the, the, the number one thing that you have to take care of. Because you cannot have some over, you can't have overdraft fees. You can't have the insufficient fund fees. These all damage your banking history. You're going to want to get to the point where you have positive ending balances. You're always seeing the cash flow grow, the income. That is going to be used down the line for a lot of lending. So make sure that if you don't have a business bank account, go get one and take care of it. it it's absolutely one of the most important things ever. Because I've heard, I've talked to people. And they're like, well, you know, I just use my personal account. I've been in business for a couple of years. Just have them write the check to me. But I have an LLC, but yet I'm still receiving checks in my personal name. Why did you even set up an LLC then, buddy? Oh, well, we're not going to get, I'm not going to say names, but I'm just talking to them today. Does everything match? Let's take a look at that. Business name, address, phone number, fax number, email. Secretary of State, IRS licensing authorities, your bank, your website. Oh, we didn't even talk about that, but your website. If you have a website, make sure everything on your website matches. And I'll tell you what, it's not required though to have a website for credit. They care more about you being in the uh, 411 directory than your website because it's easy to just put out whatever. Credit bureaus, that's something we're gonna dive into next. But let's say you're checking all of those with these agencies, you're going down the line, all of a sudden, whoop, all of a sudden we got a flag here, 15 yard penalty, loss of business credit. That's right, folks, loss. And it might just be the 411 when it was an easy fix. Oh, would you believe that? We have not even started to play the game. We're just building the field, folks. We're barely like, we got some stands up and we're putting the turf down. We're still not even finished with the stadium. That's why I've got to go to Dun & Bradstreet. These are who controls the reporting of business credits. Dun & Bradstreet absolutely runs the show. They have accounts on everybody. Well, they, their goal is to have accounts on every business across the world. They have unique identifiers for each business, referred to as the DUNS number. You actually cannot truly start building business credit until you have been through a registration process with Dun & Bradstreet and received your DUNS number. Now, does that cost anything? Well, I'll tell you what, they're gonna want you to get into their um, trade line developer, their builder, they have so many different services 
and their representatives know that they can sell because they are the gatekeeper to having established credit. Uh -uh. You don't actually need to go spend any money with them, folks. They're delay they know that they have control of the market, but they also offer their services for free. The Dunn's services for free. Because their biggest business is data. They want to collect the data from you. And so they will sell you, but they also want the data. And so this is the other problem. They're like, oh, okay, Ray, yeah, I'll go get my Dunn's number for free. And then all of a sudden they're getting denials up and down the board. And they're like, well, Ray, like, why are we getting denied? Why are we getting denied? And, and I'll look over their account everywhere. I'm like, this is perfect. This is perfect. This is perfect. This is perfect. How on earth are you still getting these denials? Then, when that happens, when everything looks perfect, which at first it's never, ever perfect, even if you're trying to do this yourself, something's always wrong somewhere. Dun and Bradstreet. I'm like, what did you actually say? when they set up your account. Because Dun & Bradstreet, they will ask you 100 questions. And then my first question is, did you answer every question? And they usually, and my clients, because at that point they've been trying to do it themselves, and then of course, they've totally made a mess of it, and then that's when people show up, they're like, eh, you know, we don't really need you, uh, wise guys and ties. I can thank you for the info, we'll go do it ourselves. Beautiful, try it. I, I did it and that's how I learned I need professionals. So, but the problem is they say, yes, I answered all the questions. And then my next question is why? And they would say, they told me I would not have, I would have an incomplete profile if I did not provide this information. And the information they provided was the sole reason for their denials. Dun & Bradstreet, wants to help you or do they or are they there to collect the data and who is the ones that actually really want to it's one of these things we're going to get into some conspiracy theories of who controls the world the financial system they want dun and bradstreet to make sure that you they stop you basically get buried here like i said lenders are scared they, they use this as a shield. If you if you say one wrong thing to Dun & Bradstreet, they will use that against you in the court of law. Ugh. Payback score is what they will score you on. So let's say you get through Dun & Bradstreet without spending any money, which is something you can do working with us. Now, of course, the next thing is, we gotta get some accounts reporting onto your Dun & Bradstreet report. What happens when you have a Dun & Bradstreet score? Well, you're going to notice that it's on a scoring model of 0 to 100. Very simple to follow. This is not, you know, 350, 800, 640. Not uh, 0 to 100. Right here at about 80 is considered perfect. It means that you've always paid your bills on time. You have never been late. 80, 100 means you've always paid early. So between 80 and 100, that's similar to having 800 and 850 on your personal side. What is your confidence walking into a bank with over 800 credit, personal credit score? You should have some confidence that, you know, they're like, oh, what's your credit score, 800? Oh, oh, thank you, sir, here's some water. Sit down, let's talk. You know, when you show up to the bank and you got a, you got a 450, they look at you like, uh, Please don't sit on our couch and there's the door. It, it's one of these things, but you know how you end up in that situation is missing payments, being late. Oh, I was a month late. I was two months late. I was three months late. Boom, nobody wants to lend to you at that point. And this is the big kicker. In the world of business, one day late can ding you. And I'm gonna get into that a little bit more in a minute, but you need to always, 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 always be paying early. Always, folks. There's also uh, business Equifax, or there's Equifax Small Business and Business Experian. These are sub-business corporate chapters to their personal reporting agencies. 
they're catching up. They're trying to catch up. But Dun Brad Street still runs the show. But these are two important that need to be set up as well. So we'll get into that a little bit later. Let's take a look at Walmart because it's a company that many of us have probably heard of. They're huge. And do you think they buy all that product or is it extended to them on some type of line of credit? Well, they currently have over 60,000 vendor accounts. So that's, they have an agreement. You provide us product, we will sell that product and we will pay that invoice after we sell some stuff. Even local Walmarts will have anywhere from 1,000 to 5,000 local accounts. It's huge, huge business but it's all built on credit, business credit. How many of these? So let's take a look at this. <clears throat> let's go into an Experian business credit report. This is the great thing, folks. This is just a brief little overview. You can actually check the credit report of any business you want to. So this will give you the legal name, where it's located, where the corporate office is, how many trade lines they have, do they have a credit score, do they have a profile? You will want to do this for businesses you potentially are going to be doing business with. Lenders are always going to be checking your profile. So if you don't even have a profile, what is the likelihood that you're going to actually get approved? Nope. Cut off right at the start. Now, let's take a look at this. We know that Walmart has over 60,000 accounts. How many of those 60,000 accounts are showing up on the report? If you're thinking in terms of personal credit, well, all 60,000, that's just the standard. It would be weird if you had a credit card on your personal side that did not show up on your credit report. On the business side, that is the complete opposite. Reporting is actually the rarity. So there's only 513 accounts that are actively being reported. Whoa, whoa, yeah, yeah, that's what I mean, whoa. You may be saying, well, Ray, so you're telling me out of 60,000 accounts, only 513 are reporting? Yes, that's what I'm telling you. And there's a reason for that, because these are these small mom and pop businesses. These, are, these could even be big multi-million dollar businesses, but you know what it takes for them to report to Dun Bradstreet? They need at least 300 active credit accounts. They need to be in one of Dun Bradstreet's payment plans for one of their programs. You know, the cheapest one is about $2,000 just to be reporting. Not only that, you need to bring on staff. You need to integrate your QuickBooks. You need to do all sorts of things just to be reporting. But that's report positive activity. Now, report negative, very easy. You just go ahead and do that. So they will report you negative but they will not report you positive. Only a small fraction, about 7% of companies that actually are out there extending credit will be reporting positive activity. And that's the problem. So now what we have done is we have gone out, we've made sure our business is showing up right to the table. <clears throat> then we went and made sure that as we're throwing those payments out there, we have Dun & Bradstreet Business Experience and Equifax Small Business out there to catch that. This is the first quarter of the game. We put our team and the playing field in place. Now we start playing the game. And so the first step in a four step game or four quarters, I should say, is the vendor credit. Getting the first accounts. And this is the problem. 97% of those beginner accounts do not report. Huge problem, huge problem, because we have to find the three. Let's do the math here, folks. In this first round, we want five to six accounts. Let's say six accounts to be safe. If only 3% are reporting, that means out of 200 companies that you go to, Six is what you're gonna get, and that is what we need. So you can either go out there and try to find six out of 200 and make those purchases. And I mean, we're talking these purchases could be $50 required, $100, even $200. I've seen some as high as $500 required 
before they actually report. You're like, whoa, well, which ones do what? Let me ask you that. If you had to go through 200 just to get some of these beginner accounts ready and set up, how much could that cost? That's a substantial amount of money. But wouldn't this be easier if we just told you who to go to? And we said, hey, go here to this company and spend $50 with them, and this is how you apply, and this is the time frame you're looking at, and this is what you could order, and pick what you want to order, and place that, and then let's wait to see it report. Would that be a lot easier? Would that save you money? Would that save you time? Would that save you stress? It would, folks. That way you could go out there and actually worry about other things and not worry about the financial part of it anymore. But this is just the first step. Remember, we got four more quarters we got to go through here. So this is the power of what we're doing here. Wise Guys and Ties, CJ Wallace, we have gone through this path. And so we know who reports. And we would love to share that with you. That's why we got to figure out where you're at in your business. Free. 30 minute consultation to get your business serious and getting it its first accounts. We are so dedicated to getting you those first accounts. And like I said, we're not going to list them out right here because they change all the time. We want to get you into that, into, into working with us so we can walk you step by step so you can save money, so you can save time and you can have the success that you desire. Let's take a look at this because what are we doing next? We're moving. We're moving now. We just hit, we just, we just scored six points. Let's move on to the second quarter. We're gaining traction. We're, we're working the game. We're getting some, we're getting some momentum. So let's hit Amazon. Let's go to Best Buy. Let's go to Walmart. Let's go to Staples. Let's start to get it. And you're like, whoa, it's starting. But the thing is, I didn't tell you, how much do you need to spend at Amazon for them to report? Hmm. What type of account are they actually going to give you? Best Buy, great card, great account. Sorry to break it to you. Best Buy doesn't actually report. And you're like, whoa, Best Buy is huge. Why don't they report? But you miss a payment, they'll report that. But they won't report the positive activity. But you could still use it for computers, appliances. I mean, there's a lot of stuff you could get from Best Buy that, that could be usable for your business. But we got to get you, you know, another four to six accounts that are reporting. And then we're done with the second quarter. So we call this the store credit wrap. We're going to stores and getting these revolving store accounts, or it could still be in a net account. And you may be like, a net account, what is that? Well, there's a little bit difference between a net account and a revolving account. Net is simply a short extension of credit. So it could be most commonly as a net 30. That means you go and purchase product up to your limit you have 30 days to pay that back in full. There's no carrying over balances. It's get it and pay it back in full. It could be a net 15, net 30, net 60, net 90. There's all sorts of different net amounts out there. Revolving accounts. So Best Buy is say they give you a thousand dollar revolving account. They will have a minimum payment that is due and you can keep carrying the balance and working on that, putting money in, taking it off, putting money in, taking it off. That's when we start to take to the next level. We start at the net 30 accounts, then we move up to the revolving accounts. Then we move into fleet credit. So vehicle financing, we got gas cards, we have maintenance cards, we have so much to maintain what you're currently doing. We're also talking, these can be some pretty high limits. I've seen some, you know, almost $20,000 gas cards, but if you have a fleet of vehicles, that's huge, that's important. But the problem is, you don't want to, you don't want to use more than you have, but you also got to get there. You got to get to these revolving gas cards. That's power because what we're doing is we're building these relationships. Everything is a relationship. You know, when it goes back to a scared little lender, they want to know that their other little scared friends you treated right. That's all credit is folks. It's relationships. And if you have helped all the other little scared lenders, and by this point, you're working with maybe 12, 10 to 12 scared little lenders, and they're all starting to like you, and they're telling their friends. That's when we start to get here to the cash credit. We got 14 accounts reporting. So we got 14 little scared lenders 
all saying that, hey, we like this guy because everybody else is screwing us over. 80% of those businesses out there are screwing us over. But there's a small little fraction of people who are doing it right. These small little fraction of businesses that are doing it right. And it's Amazon, it's Walmart, they're doing it right. But then all of a sudden there's this little guy. There's, there's little Joseph Smith. There's little Ray Fleming. There's these little businesses that all of a sudden have an appearance of a big powerful giant and the power to pay and produce. And when you get to that point, folks, even when you're a small little guy, they start to extend you the cash credit. You start to get the revolving cash cards, the visas, the MasterCards, American Expresses, where then we can go and use that for whatever we need. And that is one of the goals that we have to get you to. And guess how fast you can get there? Go ahead and guess. Six to 12 months. Six to 12 months, folks. That's how quickly you can get there, depending on where you're at. Have you already started a business or are you starting from scratch? Well, let's help you. You already have a business and you're gonna fly through some of the first steps, but we'll probably have to go and correct some things. You don't have a business yet, yet you want to get a business. Well, let's start now. If we start now, then you can start the next year off right because you'll have all this lines and credit available. You have some rental properties. Put your rental into a business and get some of these lines of credit to offset the risk. Would it be good if we got you a Home Depot card the very first week without using your social security number in the name of your rental, but just apply that to any other business that you're doing? Could that be useful? And if you say that, hey, access to funds is not useful, Ray, perfect. Then you don't need us if you don't need any money. But for those of you who actually need money for your business and want to grow and want to expand and realize the power, then let's get you going. Let's get you started working with us. WiseGuysAndTies.com, free consultation. We'll sit down, we'll talk about, hey, what is it that we're trying to achieve? What are your goals? Let's see if there's a strategy, a direction that we can point you in to help you achieve that. And let's just be honest with what it is. Why do I want to give up all my time to make you a success? Well, I'll tell you, a long time ago, somebody told me that said, Ray, stop chasing money. Start chasing other people's dreams. If you help other people get what they want, your bank account will be a direct result of how many people you've actually helped. So that's what we're here to do. We're here to help you achieve your goals. And in turn, it's a win-win situation. And if you think that there's some, if you don't agree with that, then that's okay. But I agree that we're here to help you get the funds you need. Let's talk about the Phils and Thumbs sample out of LaPorte, Texas. This is their testimonial. They went to their bank to get a business line of credit and they got turned down. So this is what they said. They said, we got started with the financial advisors along with the business credit builder program to set up our business credibility and built our business credit. After following these steps, we've now secured over $96,000 in business credit cards and they just applied for the Platinum American Express and got approved instantly, instantly with no limit. Imagine if you, uh, told you buddies that, man, I just got approved instantly with no limit. That is awesome. Now they have four to five different companies calling them each and every day trying to give them money and that is a good problem to have. This is one of so many. We, this, and you're like, oh, well, Ray, you could have just written that. Go to our website, wiseguysandties.com. We have video testimonials coast to coast. We have more than you can even handle coast to coast testimonials of people day in day out working the system achieving success so you're not the first but don't be the last i'm telling you guys you got to get this going so will this work for you yes yes if you believe in yourself then yes if you're willing to put in the work then yes if you know that getting financing, funding for your business is going to be the game changer, then yes, up and down all day long, 
There's Abigail, another win. JC Penny Commercial Line, approved business, ninth vendor. Ninth vendor account. We got Crystal, she's getting the Uline accounts. Beautiful, two out of three again. Look at this, Manuel Castro. We got Mary, getting Office Depot, $1,000 there. These are the beginning accounts, look. Took me 15, 20 minutes on, to apply for this. Just opened up a, a Net30 account with Office Depot. $2,000 gas card, a total of six trade lines reporting on Dun and Bradstreet and Asperian. Boom, no personal guarantees. Way to kill it, girl. T, approved. $17,000 Amazon line of credit with no personal guarantee. Amazon must be in the giving mood because I don't have any trade lines reporting yet no social security number, only use the EIN number, boom. But you know why she got in so approved? Because the business is legitimate. Beautiful. JC Penny, Felicia, Jason, Dion, oh my God, JC, Tiffany, Felicia, oh my goodness, they're on Stevens. Uh, we could just keep going on and on and on and on and on. But look at this, Renee, $9,000, American Express, Jeanette, Luis, $20,000, American Express with no personal guarantee. Absolutely insane. $50,000 business line of credit. Here we go, some more happy dances. No personal guarantee lines coming this way. Oh, folks. You saw some huge amounts that are coming, coming at everybody every day. So win for you. That's what I'm asking. Today, tomorrow, next week, win. Because it's not a matter if, we all know you need it. The question is now, when are you gonna get it? But don't bite off more than you can chew. Because these cards are gonna be coming at you so fast it's like Napoleon Hill says in Think and Grow Rich. It's like when the riches come and the money starts to flow, you've been wondering where it was hiding all these lean years. And that's what business credit is. Absolutely phenomenal. So this is the system that we put together. But like I said, let's sit down, let's talk about this. Let's just point you in the right direction. See what your goals are and see how we can help you achieve it. And you know what? an easy to follow step-by-step -step system. We will show you all the accounts, we'll show you all the underwriting guidelines, we will walk you step-by-step -step through there, holding your hand, so you can achieve $50,000 minimum in lines of credit in the next six to 12 months. And then, do we just stop there? No, you work with our loan officers for the next five years because we first gotta get you lendable and then get you funding. So we'll get some credit lines, beautiful. We'll get you a couple, you know, you can grow hundreds of thousands of dollars in lines of credit, but it doesn't stop there. We keep going and we keep going and we keep working with you. Like I said, we're here at Accountability. We're dedicated to your success. Let us help you. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, bring Mr. Joseph Smith back up to the table and he's gonna give you a little test to see how I did. But I want to say, folks. Hey, would you explain what's on that previous slide? Which slide? You just skipped that one. This one? Yeah. Would you explain what is that? This is our business credibility. This walks them step by step. Yes, we just talked about this. This is, look at this. Step one, the business credibility. Everything we talked about, 10 steps of walking you through your name, your address. Hey, where do I set up a business office? We will show you exactly where to go. We will give you trainings on where to go. You can work with our team all day long if you want to. Unlimited access to our staff and our support. Well, during business hours. The other great thing is this whole site converts over to Spanish. So if you're a Spanish speaker, then our videos are transcribed into Spanish as well. Step two, establishing your credit report. So what do I have to say to Dun & Bradstreet? Let's get on a call and talk about that. What to say, what not to say, how to get your Dun's number for free and do it the right way. Everything we talked about today, folks. Step three, building your business credit. 
getting those beginner accounts established, a continuously updated list with underwriting guidelines, requirements, and all you have to do is go down and say, I want this, I want this, and I want this. Place your orders, wait for it to report. Do you know how much time and energy and money that's gonna save you guys? It's insane. It, oh, it's, it's just crazy. Another thing, you're like, well, how do I even know what shows up on my report? We have hands down the cheapest monitoring because all we do is add you into our corporate account. $24 a month. When you're actually monitoring, 24 bucks to actually get the reports on your credit situation. And guess who looks at that? Not just you, but our team looks at that. And we make sure you're on track and we will show you if you're approved, if you're pre-approved, we will tell you which accounts to apply for, what not to apply for, so we can get you there in six to 12 months. Try to do it on your own. It will work, but it could take you years. Um, took us about three years before we decided to actually hire the professionals to train us, and then we became business certified and realized that everybody else out there needed this. We needed it, but we were not told that this was available. That's why we're, you learn from the mistakes of others and learn from our mistakes and make today the day that you say, hey, I'm taking business credit serious. I'm, I'm doing this. I don't care what it takes. I know I'm going to do this. So if I said, hey, I will give you, let's just think about business for a minute. If I said, give me $10,000 today, and in six to 12 months, I will return $50,000 to you. Is that a good investment? Deal. That is a good investment. And if you are like me, you would say all day long, deal. Now this is not $10,000, but we will get you $50,000 to use for your business. Oh, but we walk you every single round, every step of the way, all in one, keeps track of it, everything for you so you can do what you're put here to do and that is to run and grow your business you want to take on a full-time job of building business credit that's fine or you could just use a plug and play system and do what we do put somebody else in charge of it or just hey i got a couple of minutes here get it handled beautiful but don't let it be something that's going to take you out of the game but use our system to fuel you so you can actually play the game now that is our business credit builder system we encourage you and we invite you to get started with us tonight i it wouldn't make any sense if you didn't but that's that's a decision that you'll have to make on your own but i'm gonna that's my time and i'm gonna go ahead and bring up the master business man himself the funding expert, they call him the money guru, they call him the, uh, the, the financial sensei, because I'll tell you what, he takes people in bad credit situations and straight karate kicks them in the face. <laughs> <laughs> he takes your business with no money and chops in half like a piggy bank and spills out cash. This is what Joseph Smith was born to do, is help you get the funds you need. Come on, Mr. Smith. Hey, Come on. Let me give you that. Perfect. Then you take that. Trade you. Make sure you look at that. All right. Man, wasn't that awesome? Ray Fleming is awesome. He's the man. Guys, he just downloaded what, I mean, we go on seminars and we put this information out and we help people uh, get started all the time. <clears throat> but let's see if you learned anything. All right. So. He went through and he taught you everything about this. So we already know on the, on the personal side what a perfect credit score is. But what's a perfect credit score for business? Survey says 100 Paydex score or 100 IntelliScore. Or I think even the Experian model also is, goes up to 100. So, but who are, who are the reporting agencies? Oh, did I just say them? D&B Business Experian and Equifax Small Business. Awesome. Hey, folks, this is so great. What affects your score? Are you paying attention? Payment history, that's it. Pay your bills on time. Have we stressed that enough today? I hope so, because let me leave you with a philosophy that, I, that was taught to me in football. To be early is to be on time. To be on time 
is to be late. And to be late is fatal for your business and for business credit. So, guys, pay your bills, pay them on time, every time, right? Can't hammer that enough. Now, how long does it take? How long does it take to build business credit? Well, if you use professionals like Wise Guys and Ties in our system, it can take you six to 12 months. If you do it on your own, and all the headache and money and time that you spend doing that, because I know, because I tried it on my, myself, could take you a couple, three years. It's up to you, folks. You can do this on your own, but you know, why? <laughs> why, if you know you can put some professionals around you, surround yourself with a new finance team, why not just do it? Because you have better things to focus on and worry about than turning uh, a part-time or full-time job into building business credit. All right, so what is the cost, you ask, to work with a professional like this? Well, I'll tell you. You can go find this all out at our website, too, at wiseguysandties.com. What is the cost? The full price of our services to help you get $50,000 in lines of credit in the next 6 to 12 months. Drum roll, please. $4,997. And that means, yeah, there's payments. You can go to our website and check that out. However, we do offer a 50% discount for if you make a one-time upfront payment. You can get the whole program, $5,000, for just $2,497. Folks, if you've done your shopping and your homework and you've looked around, you know there's other people that work in this space that help you build business credit. And some of them, um, I think they're shysters because they say they're building your business credit, but they're really not. They're making you give a personal guarantee for your business. There's a time and a place where you might want to consider doing that, but if you're trying to do this without using your social security number, then there's people out there that really aren't building business credit. They're really leveraging your personal credit to help you get business credit. But if you want to do this organically, if you want to do this where you don't need to use your personal credit, you can keep your business and your personal separated, you can do that with the Business Credit Builder. And you can do that for $2,497. I mean, what's that come with? That comes with the online program that you need to check out on our website, go to our pricing page, and there's a 20 minute walkthrough of the whole Business Credit Builder program that we don't have time to share with you right now, right? But you get that whole program, step by step, walking you through everything, plugging your information in, giving the underwriting guidelines for all of the starter vendors, all the vendors in round two, the store, revolving credit, fleet credit, cash credit, all of those underwriting guidelines, and step by step, which ones to apply to. That all comes with that. But on top of that, you get a team of financial advisors. And we're not just talking, hey, call them anytime you want during business hours. You could, but our team, because we're committed to your success, we're proactive. We're going to call you every day until you tell us not to. <laughs> right? No, we're, for the first two weeks, we call you every day. We want to make sure you're in the system, that you know what to do. We want to show you what everything that we can do, how we can help you, because we want to help show you that we're going to get you $50,000 in lines of credit for your business in the next 6 to 12 months. But it doesn't stop there, because just getting business credit, that's the start. You're going to need a team of loan officers, because you're going to start applying for commercial loans, uh, commercial leases, equipment leases, uh, product inventory, anything that you need, any kind of loan, an SBA loan, you gotta fill out a lot of paperwork. You gotta get everything together. You gotta have your financials in order. Well, guess what? Our team of loan officers are gonna coach you and advise you everything that you need to do. They'll help you assemble your paperwork, help you submit your, your, your packets, and they will give you the confidence of knowing that when you apply, that you're showing up fully dressed, you got your pants on, right? So many people, they don't know what they're doing. They fill out their applications and it's like showing up to work without any pants on. Like, who, who, who would work with somebody like that? No, they're gonna make sure that everything was done correctly. That's the full service that we give you because yeah, we'll get you $50,000 in the next six to 12 months, but who wants to stop there? How about another 150,000 after that in the following year? How about getting up to half a million over the next three to four years. How about getting to a million dollars in five to eight years from now? That's what our team is for. That's what you need, all right?
So what else do you get? Uh, you get a whole bunch of really cool stuff like, uh, oh yeah, we're going to throw in some books. So our financial advisors, they've written lots of books. Nine most devastating mistakes business owners make when financing. Twelve credit lines and cards you can get for your business today, right? The definitive guide to building business credit. 27 killer ways to get cash financing for your business. Business credit building checklist, which led to the development of the online business credit builder. FICO scores decoded. That is a really good book. We, uh, we're actually working on another book very similar to that, but we're going to help you learn how to repair your own credit so you don't have to hire anybody to do that for you. And then our current book, book, we actually have a book. Ray and I <coughs> have taken this whole presentation and really our eight hour presentation that we do where we train literally step by step through how to build business credit and we put it into a book. Here's what's great about the book. You want to know who the starter vendors are? You want to know who to go to in round two? You want to know who to go to in round three and round four? We put it all in the book. Folks, at your, at your disposal are literally over 15 you know, vendors that you can use. We're talking about just in round one, a total of 30 vendors we put, well, that we've put in this book. right? And we're going to keep releasing every year new additions to update that so that you can always have all of that information at your fingertips. right? You can get all of that. All of that's a $300 value. All of these books combined. $300 value, right? Just for getting the Business Credit Builder program, right? <clears throat> that is awesome. Hey, for those of you who didn't, came in late, you didn't know, hey, all the information from today, all the notes that Ray was going over, the four steps, we've condensed that into a little uh, ebook we want you to download. Text the word credit to 602 497 2257. That's 602. 497-2257. Text the word credit, and when you do, you will be able to download an ebook that will give you the four steps that Ray went over to building business credit. In addition to that, you'll get in our weekly email list where we're going to keep communicating with you and uh, let you know about business credit, what's happening in the world of financing, the success that people are having building business credit. We will only ever contact you directly if you want us to. So we don't share your information with anybody. It's just our way of trying to serve you and provide more value to your life. Awesome. Okay. Hey, that's the rest of our time. But listen, I wanted to let you know. Remember, we, I started off telling you about the greatest football game ever played. And when we last left, the score had just been tied up. And they said, it's not the size of the fight of the, it's not the size of the dog in the fight. It's the size of the fight in the dog. Right? Because what's that mean? You don't have to be a Walmart or an Amazon or a Google to build business credit, right? If those businesses went to the bank, yeah, they'll get business credit for sure. You could be a little business, a small little business, and still be on an e business credit is an even playing field. Even you, if you follow the steps that Ray talks about, about becoming a legitimate business, even you can build business credit. So. But how did it end? How did this whole thing, how did the greatest game in football ever end? Well, it went into overtime, right? Now, how many of you feel like your business is facing sudden death right now? Getting a little real, like, I don't know, honey, if we're gonna make it. You might be talking to your spouse at a, around the kitchen table. Um, what are we gonna do? Maybe Velocity Banking's only slowed <laughs> The leaky, the leaky boat, right? But what are we going to do? You need to not only do velocity banking, but you need to start adding some business credit to, to get out of your situation. So, well, in this game, here's what happens. If they flip the coin, and in overtime, each team gets the ball, and they get four tries to score. All right, so Oklahoma goes first. And you know what? This is a picture right here of, in Oklahoma of Adrian Peterson. And if you're not a, a football fan or enthusiast and don't realize, he went on to be, play in the professional, uh, professional football for the Vikings and uh, he's had a wonderful career. But here's the thing, he's an All-American Hall of Famer. And so what do you do when you have somebody like that on your team? What do you do if there's somebody in your business who knows how to close the deal and they're, the, they're just awesome? You give them the ball. So they give. Adrian Peterson the ball, first play, right up the field, and one play, 
touchdown. And there was Boise State going, oh, what are we going to do now? Well, I tell you what we're going to do. We're going to give the ball to our running back and see what he can do. So they give the ball to him and oh, they didn't go anywhere. All right, well, remember, we got four tries. So try number two, we're going to pass the ball. And, oh, we dropped that opportunity. Does that happen? Oh, it was right there, and it just went right through your hands. Well, okay, well, that's third down. Now in football, when you have to score and it's third down and the, and the defense knows that, what are they going to do, right? You're trying to claw your way and get out of debt, start your business, try to achieve financial freedom, the American dream. You're going for it. But look, people, there are forces that are going to align themselves against you. All of a sudden, it feels like a bad thing happens and then another bad thing. It's like they always come in threes, right? All of a sudden, you're, you're surrounded, right? You've got a, 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 a medical bill that comes up and you're like, honey, I thought we paid that. Now we're being sent to collections. And then all of a sudden, one of your kids has to get braces. And you're like, oh, what's going on? And it's like everything's coming at you. Well, third down, the defense, everybody came on a blitz. Quarterback was surrounded, so he had to throw the ball away. Now we're on fourth down. It's like, weren't we just here? It was like, right, the game ended. It was a fourth down. We have to figure out some way to throw the ball down the field and score or we lose the game. So what do we do, right? Business credit. <laughs> we give, we, they toss the ball to the running back and he's running, but in, and everybody's running in because they're going to tackle him. But instead of running, he stops and then he throws the ball. What? Yeah, it's a special trick play called the halfback toss. And he throws it to a tight end that no one saw in the end zone. Touchdown, Boise State. But, okay, so every time you score a touchdown, that's six points, but they're down by seven. So they have an option. They can either go for the one-point conversion. I wonder how many points that's worth. Oh, yeah, one point. They can go for a one-point conversion and tie up the game and try and win in overtime, right? That would be called playing it safe. Or they could go for the two-point conversion. I wonder how many points that's worth. Oh, yeah, two. They could go for the two-point conversion, and if they score... They could win the game, but if they don't score, they could lose. So the coach, Coach Peterson, he has a, a big decision in front of him. Does he play it safe, kick the extra point, and try and win and double overtime? Or does he play for the win? Let's see what Boise State did. They're lined up. Here's what's great. In this formation, as you can, I don't know if you can see this on YouTube. They've been in this formation all game long. This is called trips right. And every time it's a quick throw, they, they quickly throw the ball over here to this uh, wide receiver. These two guys try to push these guys back, and then they try to run on the field. It's called a bubble screen. So they've been doing that like three or four times during the game. So here we are. Let's watch what happens. The defense thinks they're ready for it. Right, Boise State for the win. They hand it off to Johnson. Boise State has won the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. Can you believe it? Now I know some of you are like, "Whoa, wait a minute, wait a minute!" I, I didn't see that. Show that again. I know because everybody always asks to see it again. Okay, he fakes the throw, and the receiver over there is faking the catch. But he never lets go of the ball, and the running back just walks up and takes it from him and runs into the end zone. Watch this. It's called the Statue of Liberty play. Right. Boise State for the win. They hand it off to Johnson. Boise State <laughs> has won the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. Woo! Can you believe it? <laughs> that was awesome. I love it. That never gets old. Never. Greatest game in football ever played. But let me let me tell you something. Coach Peterson, he didn't play it safe. He played for the win. So let me ask you, are you gonna play it safe? Right? I mean you don't you don't have to do business credit. You could figure this out on your own, right? You don't have to hire a professional. You you might think, oh well maybe maybe I'll submit a credit card application. Well, 
We'll figure it out. Or I'll get this figured out at some point. I'll start a business and then I'll come and... Guys, you don't need to start a business and then come work with us. If you haven't started your business, then that's the time you need to start working with us because we'll work with you to make sure you start your business right. But are you going to play it safe? Think about that. Or are you going to play to win? Well, I, I, that's a really hard question to ask. Let's see. Let's think about it. Are we going to play it safe? Are we going to be moderate? Who are all the great, think right now to yourself, who are all the great moderates in this world that have inspired you and made you think, I want to do something great with my life? I can't think of any, can you? But what about those who risked it all? People who sailed across the ocean when they thought the world was flat just to prove that it was round, right? What about 50 years ago when men got into a rocket and launched off of the planet Earth and landed on the moon, right? That was the capstone of nine years, right? When when uh, JFK said that uh, we, we, our goal is to land a man on the moon and return him safely before the end of the decade. Keep in mind though that they have not invented the computer that, that could do that. They don't have the alloys. They don't have the rocket technology to do that. And yet, and, 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 and up to that date, we'd only been in space for four minutes. One, we had one successful flight. We were, we were in space for four minutes. And here comes the President of the United States saying we're going to do that. That's bold. That's risky. Let me ask you, for Neil Armstrong to make it on the moon and walk on that moon, and all, it, all the time that it took, was that risky? Were there men who lost their lives in the space program to make that dream a reality? Yes. Yes, there, there, were, there were astronauts who died. It's, it's a risky business. But you know what? What a great achievement. What perhaps is the greatest achievement of mankind? Landing on the moon, right? Well, think about your business. Where are you at? Do you want to play it safe and stay here on the ground? Or do you want to shoot for the stars? Business credit will get you there, but only if you're willing to play for the win. If you want to play it safe, well, you're not qualified to work with us. But if you want to play for the win and you want to go for it, then you're the kind of people that we're looking for. We want to join. We want you to join our team. In fact, we want to be on your team. We want to be your financial advisors, your loan officers. And we want to help you build business credit and get fifty thousand dollars in lines of credit in the next six to twelve months, folks. I want you to contact us. Set up a consultation. Call us right at eight 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 five Biz Credit or email us at bizcredit at wiseguysandties.com or better yet, go to our website, wiseguysandties.com and when you do, just click on the free consult. Set up a 30 minute consult. Let us find out more about who you are, what your business is. Let us learn about what your goals are and let's see if we can find a way, a, a, a path from where you're at today to where you wanna be and see if business credit is the right option for you. Folks, I want to thank you so much for having us out in your home tonight. I want to say there's no time like right now. Get off the sidelines. Get in the game. Play to win. And win with Wise Guys and Ties Building Business Credit. Good night. God bless.